Hello, I am Amy from Moonmindology.com and today I want to look at the chart of Russell Brand. He's in the news. He's a comedian, although some people do dispute that. He was married to Katy Perry in the early 2000s and he has a YouTube channel where he talks about racy political stuff. Now, Russell Brand has recently found himself in hot water over sexual assault claims. So, let's have a look. What is his chart saying? Brand, first off, has an ascendant in Perverse Shadow, which is the invincible star. And these people can be fearless, controlling and powerful, but they're also social climbers, schmoozers, and they desire to create a positive change in the world. And this can also be associated with declarations of war. And the temperament can be quite sharp. He may be good at seeing into other people, but there can be a blindness to his own flaws. So his first ruler goes to the sixth house, and that means he's very interested in health, healing, and even philanthropy. And the very interesting part of this placement is it can be linked to being falsely accused, but it can also reference having legal battles. And he has previously <clears throat> had, a pre uh, had a legal battle with a newspaper regarding false allegations um, about him being unfaithful to a partner or something like that. <clears throat> and he won. Saturn's the second house ruler. So this is usually an interest in making money through services to others. This could be food, health and nutrition and I believe he does own a pub. Um, I don't know too much about that. The sixth house is a Dastana and the second house is the mouth and there can be a proneness to the foul language or even the use of illicit substances. Of course, he's very open about his historic drug use. And now he's gone full circle and I believe he avoids all substances and is, has an extreme vegan diet. Sixth house is an Upachaya house. So it gets better with time. So he's moved away from that drug issue now. Saturn in the sick that gives good focus and discipline but there can be problems with co-workers and employees. There could be health problems related to bad decisions so it's really important that the diet is closely monitored. In the sixth ruler of the fifth there can be sick children or children who grow up to be in the medical field and the health of his health is overall quite strong but it's the mind that can be problematic as well as love affairs. Pluto is in the ninth. So this can create someone who has fanatical beliefs and they may force their opinions on others because they think that they are ultimately right. They've done all the research, they know, they know. And they may find themselves in positions where they argue with leaders and he has been seen to do that. And there can also be problems with his father or teachers being very controlling the ninth ruler and the fifth and this can give a closeness or a softness in the relationship with the father and I think the relationship has improved over time but it wasn't always so good and also there's an attraction to religion and a desire to be a teacher. Mercury is in the fifth so this is a clear mind and clear perception he's very intelligent and he can be a very respected advisor and of course you look at his youtube channel there are so many people who are interested in alternative politics and conspiracy theories who say this guy knows what he's talking about i get all my news from him so on and so forth and he's also a great storyteller and that is shown by this placement son in the fifth is amazing for intelligence and confidence and he would not be the sort of person who is insincere and he will be able to be avoid being fooled by other people he won't be fooled easily he's a natural leader and he likes to be in charge and of course if the fifth house is all about performing and the sun is all about burning bright and it's where your heart is he loves performing and he loves to show off and he loves to be the center of attention and we can see that he's an attention seeker the eighth and the fifth houses are very sexual in nature as well so this could be a pointer to his renowned high sex drive 
K2 in the fifth creates a connection to spirituality and there can be obsessive ideas that can be an attraction to drugs or alcohol with this placement. There's also an enjoyment of escaping this world, be it through meditation or through mind altering activities that may or may not be illicit. The ruler of the 6th and the 8th are together in the 5th and this is an Arista Yoga. And when these two planets are activated there can be a tumultuous experience that may push him towards spirituality. And the most extreme time of that could actually be in 2031. And there can be difficulties with children as well but there can be a spiritual gift. The sun is conjunct K2, and this shows that he was born around an eclipse. So there can be a general disappointment with society. He has a rebellious streak, but there can be a disconnection from the father, and that adds up. This is also very spiritual. So there could be an element of not feeling totally seen or understood by other people. The sun is opposed Neptune and this really is escapist tendencies and sometimes it can be linked to depression as well. And this is a solid sign of confluence that the father was absent and he will, Russell will love culture and also likes things that takes him out of this realm of consciousness. Neptune in the 11th friends who are very creative and very glamorous could be artists but there could also be dishonest friends who may be unstable and there could also be links to people who have mental issues and addictions rahu in the 11th is great for wealth and fame as it gives good friends good acquaintances and they will want to propel him they will want to help him out and he has great ambition and he will mix well with people who are famous and wealthy which ultimately gives the opportunities to get to the point where he's got in his career Uranus is in the 10th and this is an attraction to unusual careers and there could also be many changes in his career and of course he can't settle on one thing, comedian, political activist, actor, you know he's done a little bit of music here and there, he's done this, he will dabble in anything, uh, TV, host, he likes anything and it always seems to be on TV or through technology uranus intense so of course youtube as well it's all technology based and it's linked to uranus he wants to be groundbreaking he is eccentric he wants to be different and he wants to make a change that's all uranus <laughs> ruler of the fifth and the tenth is in the seventh so children are really important to the marriage and his partner will have a lot of success and good connections themselves with something like this i'd probably say that if he got married and didn't have children after he got married that may have been a deal breaker for him and we do know that there was a breakup of a marriage for him and katie perry and i wouldn't be surprised if that was a lot to do that they weren't going in the same directions the spouse can give a rise in business, which Katy Perry did give to him. Suddenly, he was one of the most famous people in the world. And his spouses are usually met through work, and he will be attracted to people who have great power. Venus is in the seventh, and that makes partners very attractive, but there could also be a risk of infidelity. And there could be an attraction to artists, but there will be a talent with making relationships in general. And there has to be a focus on not overindulging on pleasures because they can take hold of these people. Of course, his history, <laughs> he is, is very indulgent um, in in love acts and he was renowned for it. Rahu aspects Venus. Venus is passion, Rahu is excess and this is probably the cherry on top as to why he was announced shagger of the year. I think it was by a newspaper called the Daily Mail. It's not a very good newspaper over in the UK. <laughs> but 
This combination is a proneness to sex additions and addictions and obsessions with relationships. And there can be an attraction to foreigners as well and people who are culturally different. So sexuality can also be quite open and social norms can sometimes be ignored. So you get the drift. <laughs> that is what he is like. That is what he it is like he's always pushing the envelope rahu also aspects the moon which gives obsessions and mental unrest and he is always on the go trying to find answers and he has an interest in the obscure and more unusual subjects as well as being quite intuitive however addiction problems again and mental health issues and there is a need for personal space so those are things that are always going to play in for him when he has the nodes activated the ruler of the seventh is in the third and that brings an attraction to people who are very expressive and this can even go as far as those who perform sing dance and we know his first wife did the moon is in the third, which shows that there is a love for travel and keeping up appearances. And he's very interested in communicated. He is very interested in communicating, and he may be somewhat of a gossip. There is a love for self-expression, and he will have a lot of energy, as we know, but there are problems with his mother, which is not so obvious because he always speaks very highly of her, but I don't imagine that the relationship was always too that pleasant mars is in the third which makes him all about competition and he's a brave person and the personality is very constant but there could be very there could be a lot of arguments and disagreements with his peers and the people who he doesn't agree with so of course let's go backwards he's very opinionated he has a political view ding 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 likes to argue likes to have a competition ding ding ding, ding. He, these are things that he, he has publicly done Mars is with the moon and that is a Chandra Mangala yoga and this is a money yoga but once again tension with the mother. Jupiter is in the third and it's in its own sign which gives great creativity and great expressions and all things in the third house get better over time and Russell has improved with age and instead of being all about that self-expression and going outside of the box and forcing it down people's throats, he is now more into teaching and sharing his knowledge instead of being so overtly obnoxious. <laughs> Mars is conjunct Jupiter and this gives a lot of energy and it's really evident in the way he acts. He's a risk taker, he's daring and once again he can have strong political opinions and will fight for his beliefs he's very charismatic he's very charming and he exudes confidence as well as being very ambitious and once again competitive he has started to dabble in politics and this combination is a political combination so King Charles has it, Winston Churchill, and even Hugh Hefner. So they're big personalities, strong opinions, and they like they were like to have affairs. <laughs> and I'm not saying that uh, the Russell Brand is going out and being unfaithful, but what I am saying is that there is a lot of masculine energy and a desire to perform sex acts essentially there is a lack of control um, around that there is a lot of energy behind that so mars is opposed pluto and that can in some cases be violent but not always mars is jammed between two benefic planets which i think actually minimizes the negative uh, aspect of this but he is overpowering and he's confident and he's charming but what is that? Is it is it in the personality or is it physical strength? We have to have to look at that. Where does his power lie? And I would always say the way Russell Brand does portray himself is that he wants to overpower people with his words. He wants to seduce and it was very much a competition for him. Could he be violent? I don't know I don't know but I would say it's to a lesser degree because this is probably one of the more problematic combinations that I would look to 
but seeing as Mars is surrounded by benefics, I really think that minimizes and mitigates some of the more explosive and negative sides of that but I could be wrong. The ruler of the fourth and the eleventh is in the third so family life when it was growing up it could have been a full of a lot of arguing and fighting and on a positive side there could have been some culture and a little bit of travel as well. Money could be made through creative arts, communication and selling and he can be involved in educational groups. The ruler of the third and the twelfth is in the third so he's very competitive and this is confluence for other signs. He loves communicating, expressing himself, teaching is very important to him and he's most likely an avid reader. He has very high energy and the personality, it doesn't waver or change. His personality is solid and he is confident in that. He doesn't change and he, uh, he is not the sort of person who I would expect to be inauthentic. There are a few signs that say he has problems with siblings. The reason is that he has none. It's very, very interesting. I have no siblings and you, there is confluence in my chart that there is potentially a death or an ending of a sibling. Well, that also goes for not having one at all, which is very, very interesting how that plays out. So the 12th of September, Pluto aspected his Venus. Around about that time, there were the allegations that came to light. Now, this combination can be associated with betrayals of lovers, but also Pluto is great power. So this could be a powerful force that is swooping in from above and attacking him. At the end of September, Saturn will aspect Rahu, and this could really pour, cause problems with his associates or his friendships. And he may find that he loses money and respect from those around him. In November, Pluto will aspect Venus again. So there could be more claims or there could be something going wrong with, going wrong with more people exerting their power over him, more betrayals. And in December, there's going to be a repeat of the Saturn and Rahu, Rahu. So there will be a further decline in his reputation, in my opinion. That could manifest slightly different but we'll wait and see how exactly it happens. But I think it might be, there might be some, some wiggle around with that. In January, Rahu will transit to Jupiter. And I think this is really going to expand his professional status, but there could be a power that does temporarily shut him down. The last time that Rahu was in this place, it was 2006 and he was really climbing up the ladder during that time. Of course, there could have been other things at play, but I don't think that he's gonna to have to spend much time battling away allegations. Eventually in December, 2024, he will start to have Jupiter aspects again. And I just don't think that this is going to a place of rack and ruin. I think that the biggest impact here is going to be Pluto retrograding. But Pluto made its first part pass of this point around December 22 to January 2023. And so I had a look in the news with great difficulty to see what kind of articles were coming out about him around about that time. And I found something quite interesting actually. Around about that time, he was interviewing whistleblowers that were related to the Fauci family, which is very, very interesting. So what do I think? I love, I love a good conspiracy as much as the next person, but I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. So he could have been portrayed by a former lover with that Pluto, but it's activating his fifth, seventh and 10th. So that could be related to bosses, associates, and politicians but I'm not even sure that this will result in a court case to be honest I think it might just start to fizzle out at least for the next year anyway and I think that Mercury and Venus are two planets that are just too positive for him to actually have any major issues and there's a real divide between people coming out in support of Russell Brand and people who are against him however just because he didn't do it 
to you know the women who are coming out and saying he never treated me badly it doesn't mean he hasn't maybe done that to others however the claims were between 20, 2006 and 2013 so i would expect to see some major aspects to the moon during that time in order to confirm this if that was in his nature he would probably still be doing it but we have to see how it pans out I would say that around April 2012 and Feb 2013, there could have been a sudden change of mind as well as some kind of outburst. But I do think that this is really when he got stuck into politics, um, as I searched around about that time. And actually April 2012 is when he first testimony, testified in front of a parliamentary committee about drug addiction. And in 2013, he did become known as a public activist. So this ties in with the image change, but he could have suddenly decided to change his ways. With a chart like this, I really think he would probably fight any legal battle to the bitter end. And I do think that he will do well quite illegally. So he won a defamation, a defamation case a few back years back as i said uh it, with the i think it was the daily mail or the sun one of those and he did well he came out you know with some money and he did well so i don't think that this is actually going to get him down uh i think that he may have some hard times to come in you know almost 10 years I certainly don't see any significant suffering in the short term future. Thank you very much for listening to my analysis today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much and I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye.